somebody that is not like them. Come on, tell somebody else that is not like them.
you might stand in the house of prayer one more time. Maybe he asks you now not to speak in the midst of your
two passages of scripture today. Good Lord, have mercy. Yes. God, have mercy. Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 12. I'm also going to read from Genesis chapter 23. I know it's good. I yes, know it's yes, good. Yes, yes, yes. I know it's good. I know. That's why I can't help but to pray. Because I know it. I can't help but to dance. I know it's good. I will do a lot of fine myself to sleep. God made a way out of nowhere. I wish I had a witness to this. I Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Mm -hmm. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. Yeah. Hope deferred yeah. maketh the heart sick. Yeah. Yeah. But when the desire comes, yeah. you ought to look at somebody and say, It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Verse number 17. Woo! My God, have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, hallelujah. Woo! Genesis 26, verse number 17. When you have it, you can say amen. amen. It says, And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar, and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the name by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the herdmen of Gerar did not strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of it of the well Isaac. But they strove with him. And they digged another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well. My God. God. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And said for now. The Lord hath made room for us. And we will be fruitful. In the land. I want you to grab your name that looked at me. Being laid off to almost losing my mother to diabetes. 
I've had heartaches and I've had headaches. I've, I've been a failure, but I've also been lied to and disappointed. I've been on cloud nine, but I've also scraped the bottom of the barrel. And lastly, I've been abused and I've been mistreated. And it seems as though sometimes this is the route of life. But I wish you'd tell somebody there is another well. Amen. It seems as though life has always has some kind of trouble to throw your way. It seems like life has a way of throwing a curveball every now and again. Seems that life always has a limit to extend to you. Now, that is just the life that we live. We all experience tragedy after tragedy. We've all been at that thing we call our breaking point. Can I get a witness in here? We've all seen things and situations crumble to the ground. Because, amen, amen, sometimes we are dealt a hand of cards that we don't know what to do with them. Can I get a witness in here? But I wish you just tell your neighbor, so neighbor, there is another way. Many of us expect one thing to happen for us, but something totally different occurs. We expect a man and plan for a certain outcome, but another one is presented to us. We look for one blessing to come. Instead, a drought and a famine hits our whole household. Our day can start off great, but by the end, it's in a spiral. A man, we're up one minute, and by the end of the week, we're down in the next. We're all smiles one day, but on another day we can barely make it. Am I talking to anybody in here? Has life ever made you question where you were in life? Has life ever caused you to think how in the world did I get this job? Thinking all would be well and now every day I leave frustrated, mad and confused. How in the world were I just in love such a short time ago and now it seems like I'll be divorced before I can blink twice. How in the world did I receive a promotion? Amen. But I'm being demoted within a year's time. But tell somebody there is another way. Amen. Because we must understand that life sometimes will present us deferred hope. Amen. Amen. Sometimes life, amen, will present us, amen, with the situation that will trample over, amen, our optimism. Sometimes life presents us with tragedies, amen, that defer our hope. Amen. It defers what we believe. It crushes our dreams. Amen. And it breaks our promises. Life has a way of deferring your hope. Amen. It will detain your hope. Amen. It will crush your hope. It will step on your hope. But can you tell somebody, I believe there's another way. Amen. I believe that there's another way. Amen. Solomon tells us here, amen, glory to God, in the book of Proverbs, that deferred hope, it maketh the heart sick. In other words, when things don't happen the way they're supposed to happen, it can make you derail. Amen. When your plans, amen, don't add up the way you think they ought to, amen, it will make you derail. When things go south, it can be heartbreaking. When things go in the wrong direction, it can be heartbreaking. Because deferred hope, it may give the heart sick. Failures will make you feel like you're not good at all. Disappointment will make you feel like that you'll never be anything. Being left alone will make you feel like nobody wants you at all. Not living up to the standards of other people will make your heart sick. But tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, there is another way. Amen, there is another way. Amen, if we look this afternoon at our text, in our text we see a man who is faced with deferred hope. 
We see a man who is disappointed time and time again. We see a man who has dealt a hand of cards that's not favorable at all. This man's name is Isaac. Somebody shout Isaac. Isaac is God's chosen man. Isaac is the pick of the litter. And like many of y'all, Isaac has become hot stuff. Can I get a witness in here? He's gained wealth. He's gained notoriety. And he's gained crops and hurt. His name is in the community. His works are speaking for him. And his treasures are being stirred up. Yet the other side, we see a group of people who are angry because when they look at themselves and they look at Brother Isaac, they realize that Isaac is a blessed man and they're not blessed by them. When they look at Isaac, it's clear to them that Isaac is a blessed child and they are not. It's clear that God wants to elevate Isaac, but he doesn't want to elevate them. And it's caused some issues amongst the Philistines. They're angry because God decided to bless Isaac. They're mad because God's hand is on Isaac. They're frustrated because God's hand is on Isaac.
that is not even thought about. Thank you, Jesus. He's all I need you to do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Yes. Trust me again. Thank you, Jesus. He said, put me to the test again. He said, if you put me to the test again, I'll prove to you that I have another way all the way. It's amazing to me how they stole it twice. But on the third time, This time the Bible said they couldn't even follow it. And he said, I'm going to call this place for hope. Because the Lord has made the world for us. He said, but not only did he make world, he said, but now we shall be fruitful. He said, we're going to be fruitful. We're going to be able to multiply in the land. He said that nobody will be able to take it. He said, because you found the right well. I don't know who I'm preaching to do. I don't even know what your well is. But God said, dig again. He said, there's another well for you to dig again. He said, he knows dirt fur hope made your heart sick. But dig again. He said, he knows it made you cry, but he said, I know you were weary, but be in God. He said, pray again, fast again, trust again, love again. He said, do it again. He said, because I have another way. He said, I know they shut you up. They tried to hold you back. They tried to hit you. He said, but be in God. He said, if you dig in here, I'll lead you. Shut the over hope. I'll lead you to the right well. He said, if you trust me again, I'll lead you to the right well. He said, if you put your faith in me again, I'll lead you to the right well. Believe on me. As the scripture has said, say not the river. Shall flood rivers of the living water. Right where you are, I want you to stand. And I want you to take a few moments and just worship him. I just want you to take a few moments and worship him. Take a few moments and worship him. You know the battery is going to come and meet us.
Thank you. 